I was starting in astronomy as eyes were looking at the moon waiting to land there, as, as people were looking at it saying, this is not just a beautiful thing to write poems on, this is a destination. Okay, stand by for pitch over. Oh, are we coming in? We're going to actually go there, and we're going to land on it, and we're going to do geology on it. Feet, 52 degrees. 10 feet. Back contact. Back push. Engine stop. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Let's see if I can't crash the uh, corner and get that contact. My golly, this time goes fast. Look at the boulders out there. For more than a third of the age of the universe, it's been calling out to us, this huge moon of ours. And it really is big, way big, in relation to its dancing partner, the Earth. The moon is about 1% of the mass of the Earth, and that's much bigger than the moons of the other planets in comparison. For example, although Jupiter has well over 30 moons now, most of them are just tiny little rocks, and the four biggest moons, the Galilean satellites, uh, are all much, much smaller compared to Jupiter than Earth's moon is to the Earth. This unusual relationship has everything to do with the way the moon was born. Well, the moon's made up of the same elements arranged the same way in the same minerals as the Earth. It's made up of, of mostly silicon, oxygen, aluminum, and iron in varying proportions. Most of the elements on the moon are rich in, in refractory elements, elements that have very high boiling points. All of this suggests that the moon had an origin that was a very high temperature event. We now believe that the moon is the result of a very large impact between the Earth about four and a half billion years ago and a planet probably the size of Mars. And during that collision, part of the upper part of those planets, the mantles of those planets, were vaporized and shot into orbit around the Earth. And then very quickly, from that cloud of debris in orbit about the Earth, we believe the moon accreted. Watch now as we track the incoming impactor. As the clouds of planet pieces part, we see the reforming Earth, and it's a whole new world. Some researchers, looking at the present-day moon, theorize that two or more moonlets may have assembled themselves early on. They sweep clear a lane in the debris ring as they chase each other around. Well, you know where this is going. We stand upon the infant Earth, watching this titanic smack down in the sky. Instant replay now, from an imaginary camera set high above. And it's a smaller version of the main event, as twin moonlets crash to create a larger single. And now, most of the mass of the moon has been built, within a few centuries at most. But the cleanup will take millennia. Thinking back on it, you might suppose that the Earth had to have been totally trashed in the process. No, even though a Mars-sized body struck the Earth probably at uh, 12 kilometers per second, uh, the mass of Earth is so great and the gravitational binding energy is so large that the Earth actually maintained its integrity. In fact, what it did is swallow up the impactor. They merged together and formed a new planet. Only a tiny fraction actually blew off, something like uh, uh, one one-hundredth of the mass of the impactor, which is the mass of the Moon. And when that mass finally coagulated into a single satellite, it had a powerful and continuing effect on the waters of Earth. The tidal forces exerted by the moon were extremely important, probably in the emergence of life from the sea onto the land. So one could argue that uh, without a moon, uh, it's questionable whether we ever would have had uh, terrestrial life, that is, life that actually emerged from the ocean. The evolution of biology has been influenced to such a degree by the presence of the moon, in particular in the uh, marine environment, that uh, uh, the moon was really a player 
in uh, in evolution, and uh, our world and our our biosphere would be much different uh, if it uh, did not have a, a moon above. And God said, let there be a movement in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the movement, and divided the waters which were under the movement from the waters which were above the movement. Over the ages, Moon and Earth have settled into a comfortable correlation, a rotational lock which allows terrestrial life like us to see but one lunar hemisphere. We might assume the other would look about the same. And of course, we'd be completely wrong. There is a dichotomy on the Moon. Uh, that you can see the far side is heavily cratered and there's a series of relatively small craters. If we Look at the near side of the moon, and this is the side that you do see when you look up at the sky uh, from your own backyard. You see that there are much fewer craters, but there are also some extremely large craters. There are craters with diameters on the order of a thousand kilometers in diameter, immense impact structures, and these impact craters have subsequently been partially filled by erupting volcanic lavas.